Coming up on episode number 13 of Impulse, the global show dedicated to mobile developers, we dive into the promise that mobile can and will change the world with special guest Anne Shongwei, founder and CEO of South Africa-based Afros. All that and more, and the explanation about my voice, coming up on episode 13. Hello, Peggy. How are you? I think a bit better than you right now, Rob. I have my voice. <laughs> wow, what a time to lose my voice. I, I, I have to explain it, and I'm going to do it in two seconds. I'm going to stand up okay. a little bit. If you're not watching right. the video, you're listening, you're going to miss this demonstration. It says, Ottawa Senators. It is our franchise, our NHL franchise in Ottawa. I was at the game last night, game six against the New York Rangers. I did not leave anything in the stands, including, well, I left my voice in the stands. Uh, I have never screamed so much at a hockey game in my entire life. And this is the result. This voice. What a game, though. They lost. Game seven is this week. It's unbelievable to have a playoff hockey. And uh, if you're Canadian, you understand. If you are European, you'll understand. Rest of the world, well, it's Canadian, eh? We like our hockey. <laughs> Well, hey, Rob, you know, you're talking here to the Pittsburgh Penguins, yeah. right? <laughs> so if I wasn't based in Germany, I'd probably be ripping up some floorboards with you over there. So uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, well, the great <laughs> Canadian Sidney Crosby plays on the Pittsburgh Penguins, um, but they got eliminated. And uh, Canada's team, the only Canadian team left in the playoffs is Ottawa. So obviously we, we need to support them. And uh, that's exactly what I'm doing, as I said. Yes, Ottawa Senators. Go Sens! So if you didn't know, my name is Rob Woodbridge. I am from Untether.tv. I spend all my days, if you can believe it, interviewing folks in the mobile industry. Go to Untether.tv. You'll be blown away by the kind of interviews that you get there. Um, and it's all for free. And joining me, as always, is Peggy Ann Sulls. Peggy, time to push Mobile Groove. You just redesigned. Let's talk. Let's give one. Go through, your, go through Mobile Groove. Uh, what, do, what do you do there? Okay, well, what I do similar to you is you're out there interviewing them, and I'm out there interviewing slash analyzing, so I'm more of the, the written side. I'm very pleased to always write a companion post to your fantastic interviews, Rob, um, and uh, across Untether, not just Impulse. And in addition, um, you know, working on a lot of writing projects, some of them I can't talk about right now, but I just uh, sealed the deal for one that's really going to be what I love, which is impactful uh, in the mobile industry. So another mobile industry focused book, um, in addition to some other projects, and I'll be revealing them throughout the shows because I'm sure we'll pull a couple of the interviewees in here as well. And uh, overall, yes, a new look, a new design, a new start, uh, some new clients. It's life is good, Rob. It's a good space. Life is good, except for my except for my voice, maybe Peggy. And you know what? <laughs> the great thing about this is that we actually interviewed Anne prior to this, to, to the game six. Mm -hmm. So it, you don't have to suffer through this um, throughout the interview. But uh, really, you know, we wanted to focus this episode on the social right, the social justice that mobile can do. We all know that mobile can change the world. And the, the things that we're gonna be featuring here are the things that are changing the world, the grassroots efforts that are changing the world. And Anne Shungwei from Afros, I was blown away. I know the impact was so strong with mm -hmm. me. I know it was with you as well. I, I think we just, we sat there and listened to her through this interview. And, you know, you won't see us on screen, but you can imagine our faces when she's talking are just, you know, complete astonishment about what she's doing down there in, in, uh, in South Africa. I was blown away, weren't you? I was absolutely speechless and, uh, and and I'm sure for you that's a seldom state uh, it is for me and um, you know it wasn't just being blown away but it's also now opened my eyes to what it is we can do with this show and the platform we have because she wasn't just saying you know mobile's important mobile's about you know mobile's human and uh, you know the things we hear a lot when we're talking about developing countries and app activity there, we have a real insight into what they're doing, what are the strategies, what are the tactics. This is, this is something that is developing, is happening. Uh, I love what she said, Africa Rising. I hear that all the time. It needs to be like a Springsteen type of song thing, you know, I mean, Africa Rising, that's so powerful. And it's so true. And, um, 
and and we capture it here. And and yes, I'm I'm blown away. Oh, well, we will get to we will get to Anne's uh, interview. The, the interview we did with Anne uh, in a, in a few minutes. Uh, I want to draw your attention to an event that's going on right now. Uh, by the time you're watching this or listening to this. Um, it is, I'm going to pull it up on the screen here. It is Mobile Web West Africa 2012. This is the inspiration for what we're doing here is that the focus on Africa and the developers in Africa, um, you, you know, it started off as let's see what's going on down there. But really what they're doing is they're affecting social change. And this is on April 25th and 26th. Uh, so technically, if you're listening to this on the, and it's the 24th, it is actually uh, starting tomorrow, but it's the 25th and 26th. I would implore you. As Peggy said, we're not, you're not going to jump on an airplane right now and go down there and, and get it. But I implore you to support these guys. And actually, if you head over to um, twitter.com slash mwebafrica, mwebafrica, you'll see it up on the screen there. You'll be able to follow what's going on there. And, you know, what's going on is affecting change. And, and uh, that's what's so cool about this. So really wanted to draw your attention to Mobile Web West Africa 2012 and the things that they're doing there. Pretty impressive, isn't it, Peggy? Absolutely, absolutely proud to be a media partner, and it's a whole series. So um, you know, watch this space. Well, why don't we jump into this? I, I you know, uh, certainly the conversation with Anne affected me, changed the way that I look at things. Did the same thing for you. We went out looking for things of social change that mobile is impacting. What did you come up with, Peggy? Well, usually I come in here with some numbers. Um, and I thought, well, you know, telling you how much money that uh, I saw a report, how much money we can expect make, to make from apps by the year X. I thought that really isn't the point here. So I looked at what's going on right now that will result in a report that I put at every conference I go to. And they say, you know, what are the resources you read? It's a must read resource. The developer economics report from Vision Mobile, we had them earlier as a guest in the series. That is a must-read essential resource. So what is going on right now and until April 30th is that developers can take part in the survey. Stand up. Be counted. Give your voice to the survey because this is, this is not just about giving rest of world data to go by. This is about giving us insights into the developer community, concerns, trends, and what will help all of us later when we're reading it understand and map out our businesses. So it's, uh, yes, it's about which platform you're using and, and that sort of thing, but it's all, also about how to market your apps, um, what, you're, what, what people are using right now to market their apps, where they see the opportunities. There's a sex, you know, it looks at local content, uh, areas like Africa. Interestingly enough, China is the highest, uh, you know, it's the region with the highest interest in apps right now, the most app downloads. And this, re this study, this survey of developers, which you can take in any language when you go to the website, it's available in all languages, it's just, you know, take it, give us, lend your voice, give us your views. And if that won't do it, um, we'll come back to the all about me angle. There are prizes, okay? So that's another reason to take it. Um, the survey, if you complete it, April 30th, again, the deadline, three great prizes, one Amazon voucher worth $1,000, one new iPad, and one Kindle Fire. So there's lots of reasons, even for the me too or me only me generation, to get involved. It's not just about affecting social change, i.e. giving us views into what's going out there, going on out there in the community, you can also get a prize. So how can you say no, right? Prizes. God, that's what it is. It's all about the prize. <laughs> Everybody has a price. And what's yours? Maybe a prize here. I, yeah, go to that. We'll have the link, obviously, somewhere up there because uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a long link and I want to make sure that we actually uh, get there. So uh, and this is going till April 30th. So, you know, if you're past yeah. April 30th and you're listening to this, You'll get the results soon, and that's uh, something that Peggy and I will push out. You know, push, push, push out. And I noticed Peggy that you are a uh, media sponsor. Yeah. Or a you're a um, a sponsor. Of this. Yeah, I'm an I'm an evangelist yeah. is what I am for the report. Actually, uh, doing doing my job here, trying to uh, push it out again because it's such an important resource because it comes from us, you know, grassroots. It's not a survey of. Uh, you know, market professionals and what they think about apps, and it's not a pro it's not a survey of executives what they think about things. It's a survey of developers what they're experiencing, what they're doing. It's an incredible survey, um, and the report I can't stress it enough. But I was blown away by the last one because it absolutely picked the trends 
that we're seeing right now, a year ago, it picked them. It said, okay, people are moving away from Java and other platforms. They're going to Android and Apple. You know, we, we had a confirmation of that. We had a confirmation that brands are looking at apps. We had a confirmation that brands are looking at apps not just for awareness, but also for promotion of their brand and generating revenues, very important. And we saw the rise of local content, which is what, you know, our interview with Anne is going to bring us to shortly. All from this survey. So please contribute, contribute to this. It, you know, it's a trend, trend setting survey and uh, I love it. So uh, we will definitely have a uh, link up there, but if you go to, well, I'm not even going to read out the URL. I'll just I'll create a link that goes up there. So please go and fill that out if you can. Um, and it, well, well, go well, ahead. I Sorry, I was just going to say it is from Vision Mobile. So it is visionmobile.com and it's also supported by Bluevia. So if you do what I did, okay, you get the big long link, but you just go to visionmobile.com, click it, there's the link to the survey. Well, that's okay, good advice. So it won't be quite as tedious. Yes. Okay, Vision Mobile. Go to visionmobile.com and then click on the thing that says survey. <laughs> How's that? Developer Economics 2012 online survey. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. I can't wait to get the results from that. It will shape your business going forward for the next year. You'll know where the trend is. If you're an investor or an entrepreneur, this is something that you want to be a part of. And I'd like to mention a very super trendy motto. Did you see the motto in Code We Trust? Nice. Nice. <laughs> Oh, awesome. that's right here. I'll, I said that was, that's the best it one. It's, it's in right code up at the trust. top there in the code, uh, in the logo right up there. That's hysterical. In code, we trust. It's got a nice little Android. There you go. And Microsoft. Nice. I didn't even notice that. I want a t-shirt. In fact, I've told them that. They said, well, maybe they will make t-shirts because it will look kind of cool. But anyway. There's a new business. <laughs> in code, we trust. You heard it right here on Impulse, episode number 13. We'll take the credit for that. And... 10% of receipts as a sponsorship package. My, my, my piece here is almost the, the same thing, but um, you know, it's, it's not a rant this time, which is good. It's a, uh, you know, I was impacted by the conversation that you're about to hear with Anne, and I, I really wanted to bring up something that, that um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Canadian. I don't know if you noticed that, A. I'm a Canadian. And we celebrate Canada Day, which is like the fourth Independence Day for Canada. It's Canada Day. It's our birthday on July 1st every year. But I'm one of these Canadians that it's, I'm so proud to be Canadian that every day for me is Canada Day. It just sounds stupid, but every day I look up at a flag and I think, man, it's so great. I, I understand what it means to be Canadian. It is a wonderful thing. And, I, and I, I find it funny that we just celebrate being Canadian once a year. We should celebrate it all the time. And the same thing with social change or social impact. It's not something that we should be doing. This past weekend was Earth Day, where they said on, on the April 20th, they said, turn off all your lights, turn off all your PCs, all your electronics, and just enjoy the Earth. And I think, you know, that's great for awareness, but, you know, the 21st and the 22nd and on and on and on, we should be, we should be still doing that, uh, adhering to some of the principles of Earth Day. And uh, so whatever gets us sparked, I think that that's the important piece. But when it comes to mobile, there was a number of apps that were released out on Earth Day. And I wanted to draw attention to that. There's, here's a, a PC Mag article, 12 Green Apps for Earth Day. And it goes through 12 apps. <clears throat> and I would implore you to go and take a look at these, but don't just use them on Earth Day. That's the challenge to you. And that's a challenge that I think Anne has put towards us is that we should not just do this stuff once a year. We should always do this. And especially when it comes to social change, the right things we should be doing. So I implore you, take a look at this article. This is something that I will link to because it's a long URL. But if you go to PC Mag, or if you do a search for 12 green apps for Earth Day, go and take a look. This is the kind of stuff that what we need to be doing is bringing this out, drawing this out, bringing more people into the loop. Because as we all know, mobile is not just about shopping and retail and price checking and QR code scanning and augmented reality and phone and messaging and Facebook and Twitter. It is can change and the world it can raise economies through mobile payments people who could never get paid before can now get paid through their phone it can also do things like um uh accept payments right people don't have to travel far in developing nations and it also can as we're about to hear from ann change people's behaviors for the better educate people who couldn't previously it was just too expensive to be educated but now that they're carrying these smartphones and feature phones around with them they are being educated as a result of mobile. And Anne's story, uh, for uh, you know, based on her company Afros, is so astounding. Um, 
and w- what she's dealing with and what she's changing and how she's affecting change will change the way you look at what mobile actually brings to the table. I, that, that's the only way I can describe it, Peggy. What about yourself? Is that Should we just get right into the uh, that, that, We should get into that, but I just want to say one other thing is because mobile is, is portable also, she's talking about you know equipping the next generation of Africa's leaders through mobile with what they need to, to lead, and I, I thought that was great also. You know, making it so integral in their lives and in their education that um, you, you just have to say it's, it's so such a wonderful model because it's going to be so absolutely part of their lives. I mean, I can't wait to see the generation of leaders it produces. So yes, jump All right, right in. We're here without any further ado, the reason you're listening to this, Anne Shongwei, the founder and CEO of South African-based Afros, that's at A-F-R-O-E-S dot com. Enjoy, and We'll be back on the flip side. I know the feeling of doing that thing because I was one of the, like, read two times. What's the game about? It's like writing responsibilities and relationships. Rights, responsibilities, and relationships. I like the signs. They show that you're in an abusive relationship. If you're trying to sell something or try to educate us on something, you need to focus mainly on something that we're interested in, something that we go on to, something that we enjoy doing, because that's where you get our full attention. And gaming is actually a good idea. It, it was a good, a good method. While we're looking around at the developer community, We tend to stay focused in North America. We tend to stay focused in Europe, but there is a wide ecosystem. And to show you how wide this mobile ecosystem extends, it's a global phenomenon. We are we are looking at different countries, and and you know obviously uh, one of the one of the great uh, uh, developing nations where mobile is so influential. There is there's India, there's the south Southeast Asia, and there's Asia. There's also Africa, and South Africa. And what is going on in this community? And where are the opportunities in this community? And what are some of the developers that are leading the way in Africa doing down there? And to answer that question, we have Anne Shongwei, who is the founder and CEO of a company called Afros uh, in Pretoria, South Africa. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of background about this because uh, Anne is a, uh, a well-decorated entrepreneur. She's a finalist for the 2010 Cartier Women's Initiative, a fellow of the Unreasonable Institute 2011, and... She's a fellow of the African Leadership Network, so we should be listening to Anne. Anne, thank you so much for coming on and talking about what you're doing with Afros and uh, the game Moraba. Really appreciate you coming on and spending your time. Thanks, Rob. I've got to I've got to let you, in your own words, describe what Afros is, your company, and then we're going to jump into the games and, and around this whole concept of of. Uh, of social entrepreneurship, which is exactly where you fit. But to talk, I'll give you a few minutes to talk about what Afros is. Well, Afros is a social enterprise in its formal uh, description, but in, in, in our heart, Afros is a dream builder. What we are trying to do out here in, in, in Africa, starting with South Africa, but also in Kenya and elsewhere in the continent, what we are doing is really um, contributing to the dream that Africa has, that Africa is rising. We're no longer that poor basket case. We want to change the images and the views of, of, the, of, of the rest of the world. But more importantly, we want young Africans who are our future leaders to um, really become the custodians of Africa's future destiny. And so we uh, began to explore what platforms would enable us to do this. And we did our research and found that mobile is so powerful. There are over 300 million young Africans who are on mobile phones today. They may not be smartphones, but they're mobile phones in their hands and in their pockets. It doesn't matter where they are, what kind of internet access there is, they have access to mobile, um, to information in that way. But sadly, there's very little content that's relevant for young people here. There's very little content that's inspiring them, that's giving them information, that's giving them the skills to be able to actually take, make decisions and choices that will change their lives. And so Afros decided to step into that space and actually start creating you know, real um, fun but simple apps um, and games as well that will enable young people to engage with social challenges in their own communities and begin to solve problems and become, you know, leaders through mobile. It, it it's, it's, should be no surprise. I, you know, a, a 
full disclosure, I was actually born in Nairobi. Um, uh, oh, long, wow. uh, yes. it's my home. Really? That's my hometown. <laughs> it is your hometown. Well, it's my hometown. That's my hometown. Well. Isn't that's that pretty hometown. amazing? Ah, um, Karim Sana. <laughs> yes. Well, we, but it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody when you start to think about the, the pervasive nature of mobile, right? And we've known this for, for many, many years, is that during the Internet Revolution, uh, what, what, uh, you know, what we saw come out of uh, developing nations, but listen, there isn't an infrastructure that can support the high-speed broadband networks that we were getting in North America when it came to, I, I don't know, desk-based Internet. So they, <laughs> everybody skipped right over the desk-based Internet and went to the mobile devices. First, early adoption, we know that, early adoption. Of, of text messaging and, and uh, mobile internet and, and all those technologies. So it shouldn't be a surprise that, that there are 300 million youth that are using uh, you know, uh, feature phones and maybe some smartphones. But obviously, this is a revolution happening. And the, the idea that you focus exclusively in the mobile space on, on changing behavior and, and creating awareness for rights and human rights to begin with and, and their own rights as, as, um, as they grow and the way you shape the minds of the youth through mobile. This is, was this a, a light that went off for you or was it just a gradual piece or were you, were you a, an idea in search of a, of a distribution mechanism? I was looking, I, the idea was looking for a platform. It was. And, um, you know, so my sort of long-term vision has been to contribute to building a future generation of African leaders. But um, knowing that there's schools and other ways that you could do that, my keen interest was to fit into two, two things. One was scale. Um, and the second thing was um, to be able to um, create a conversational approach to leadership development and I wanted to be able to... to to engage young people in ways that were cool and fill in the popular culture space where everybody else around the world is the one that's defining what young people are consuming. Um, and so I went out in search of, of a platform and I also have kids. I have uh, three young, young children of my own. And so I just observed them and I was just amazed at how uh, mobile phones just capture their attention. Um, and initially, like most moms, I was like screaming at them to put it down. And then after a while, I realized, you know what, this is powerful. If we do the right things and put the right stuff in there, we could actually influence the way in which, you know, and the choices that they make. Um, and I started observing my son playing games. And he would come down, running down, and one day he came down and he said to me, Mom, I'm playing this game and I now know that we've got these great African empires, including Mandela, and there's this great uh, Mansa Musa in West Africa. And I said, well, how do you know that? And he said to me, oh, it's the game. It's the game I'm playing. Um, I did think of consoles initially and PCs and so on, but when we did our research, it was a no-brainer. There's absolutely no um, qualms about it, that the only way, the real powerful platform is mobile. And even though it changes the fact that we can't use huge, fancy uh, graphics the way you would with a console or PC, um, the important thing is that, you know, you can be smart and create a message that can reach all these, um, these different groups. So that's what I mean, that... I mean, that is it, Anne. I mean, it's it's a message. It's it's an app for social good, which is different, which shows us there are different models. How did you approach this, maybe from a design perspective, but also the perspective of saying, okay, it has to have a purpose, but it has to also be sort of fun and entertaining at the same time. Maybe you can walk me through some of that, because I'm sure that those key learnings are applicable to, to other apps um, aimed at social sure. good or, or others. Sure. Sure, this, this is a very important point for us. The whole design process was really, really critical because we wanted to be sure that the games that emerge would be played and would be used and would have an impact. And so um, as we built on, I can just walk you through what we did with Muraba. Muraba is a game mm -hmm. that, um, uh, Muraba Raba stands for uh, Zulu Chess. So it's very similar to a chess game, but these are played in the street corners of South, Southern Africa. It's called Bao in East Africa, but it's the same game. And it's basically just like a chess game played in the street corners. Um, and so we, we, first of all, spent a lot of tra time trying to understand exactly what the challenges were around gender-based violence. Um, this is a partnership with the United Nations Women for a, to end violence against women across the whole of Africa. It's an Africa-wide campaign. And so we wanted to find, really understand, you know, what, what can we actually confront 
with this game because we can't deal with every single issue on gender-based violence. There's lots of issues. And so we spent quite a bit of time visiting schools um, and community groups. We built a mobile survey tool and we used that to help us to gather data to really understand where young people were with the issue of gender-based violence. Um, and so that's the first thing. So we, we had 2,000 young people engaged. Um, we then um, um, held design labs. I mean, design labs makes it sound like a really sophisticated uh, process, but in actual fact, what we did was, you know, just go to community, um, you know, uh, uh, parks and, and at schools and be able to, you know, just pull together groups of young people who we had engaged with in the survey process. And um, we guided them through a process of helping to, de to design the app. And so we talk to them about, you know, how do we make this fun? How do you make these issues fun? You know, what is it that you want to see? You know, and then we tested some game ideas that we had. Um, and then, you know, we, we, we took Muraba Raba as one of the options. And we then um, embedded a quiz element to it, which it doesn't normally have. And we were just amazed at how excited they were at the quiz. And in fact, as we were leaving, they kept saying to us, give us the questions. We want to continue playing when you leave. So there's a lot of enthusiasm to actually... Um, uh, engage with the game and add the quiz because it was a familiar game, but it was a sort of extending the experience of the game. Um, and so that became for us really, uh, uh, it was very clear that this is the way to go. So we went ahead and built that game um, and tested it back with the same groups. So we worked with the same groups, we took it back and we realized that there were some challenges around uh, measurement of impact. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, both the United Nations and ourselves wanted to be able to, to, to be sure that, in fact, there was impact that was happening here. And so we went back and we um, developed the quiz so that, that, in actual fact, there's a back-end spreadsheet that tracks exactly how the questions are being answered by every user. Um, and there's a high score system that's built into the game. So every time they, you know, submit a high score, it goes back to the server and that data and information is, is, is available for us. And we found that to be really, really powerful because we were able to measure that, um, you know, those who have been playing the game, uh, they, they initially, the first round, 70% of them perhaps, you know, they answer about 70% of the questions correctly. After a second play, it increases by, you know, anywhere from 6 to 8%. Um, and so we, you know, we were able to build into the, the, the game without it influencing the, the fun element of the game, um, an actual measurement, um, impact measurement tool. And so we, we, we felt that that was the right game. This is it. This, let's, let's put it out there. Um, and we've had amazing results from that. Um, you know, one of the f f probably best stories that I like to tell around Moraba right now is that we were, we were, test we were testing it in one of the schools in an um, um, in informal settlement outside of uh, Pretoria. And um, one young man, after playing the game, came to us and he said, um, I didn't know before this, but after playing Moraba, I now know that I have been a rapist. Oh. And so, yes, and so we asked him, what do you mean? And he said, well... I didn't understand that date rape is a problem. I thought that when a girl says no, it's part of the courting, uh, you know, the, the courting process. And so uh -huh. we would always push our boundaries. Um, and, you know, even if she cried after a, a session, you know, you sort of said, gave her a sweet and said, you know, it'll be cool next time. Don't worry about it. Because that's the, that's the sort of um, myth or stereotype or, or perception that we, they had as young, young boys about, about, about that, about sexual consent and so on. So he said, well, I didn't realize this. So it may be a small story, but I think it's an example of how um, powerful this, this tool is. There's a young girl who shared with us that um, she had been involved in a date rape incident, but she had no idea that it was an actual legal issue and that she could actually report it. And so she was saying that even though this had happened um, 18 months before, she was now going to actually go and report that incident. So these are, you know, some of the impacts that we think are emerging. And we think that imagine if this game was played by those 300 million young Africans. Imagine if it was played by every young um, African boy um, who's ever contemplated rape or date rape. Um, I certainly believe that they will think twice about that. And I think it may influence the choices they make and the conversations that they have. And that's what we're aiming to do. I'm I'm somewhat speechless now, Peggy. I don't know about you, but you know when you, when you yes, and and the reason, and it's not very it's very rare. Ask my family that I'm actually speechless. But 
you know, we, we, we often talk about, uh, about the impact of this kind of technology uh, flippantly, like, um, you know, where you, where you see, listen, this is long term, what, what, what does the pervasive nature of mobile mean to the way that we live? the way that we yeah. do things, the way that we buy, the way that we, you know, the stuff that it seems like we're so preoccupied mm-hmm. in North America. And, and, and what you just said, Anne, um, puts it all in perspective about the real impact about behavioral change, about education mm-hmm. and the impact that this technology can have on, on a nation. And as you said, that, uh, well, on a population, not just Africa, but ar- <laughs> around the world, that it can influence the, their outcome, their lives, the betterment of the country, which is uh, what I've preached but but yeah. uh, but you're living this, so uh, you know I'm I'm floored. Uh, wow, uh, what a what a Sorry. powerful story. <laughs> yeah, it's and there's great opportunity. We see so much ahead. In fact, you know my one of my big dreams is that we're actually going to create a leadership module that we promote, a leadership and entrepreneurship module that we're going to promote in this mobile phone, and that's really where Afros is trying to take this: is to be able to say for all those young kids who are living in um, poor communities, who cannot afford to actually have the, the amazing experience of going to an unreasonable institute as I did. You know, imagine if we were able to actually create that experience for them um, through a mobile phone. Um, and you know, w- one of the other things that we've tried to do is to extend the experience somewhat by um, hiring some young people that we call motivators, And these are basically, um, young people who are sort of tech savvy and they go out and they actually promote the games they go out and they conduct the surveys they go out and and what's so amazing about about the experience that they have is that without us actually planning it they become the go-to people in their communities around this particular issue Um, but more than that they're realizing how powerful mobile is and instead of just doing the normal sort of flirting on on mobile phones you know you should see what's happening we're having this whole facebook discussion going on right now and it's really really heated hot stuff that's happening um with these groups so they're they're beginning to use the phone even with their social media to have new types of conversations because of having played this game all i can say this point in is I'm really hoping that this catches on in in rest of the world as in uh, Europe, North America, because um, you know social media, even even apps. I don't think we've gotten to the level that we understand the opportunities for for social good, social improvement, or just an interesting conversation. I mean, it's so interesting, so inspiring to hear how you're able to effectively crowdsource using this yeah. technology rather than just have a conversation, which is what the rest of us are doing. That's right. Far behind it would seem, wouldn't it, Peggy? Yeah. Well, that's what that's what that's what I'm hearing so much about is that leapfrogging. Um, what what about the opportunities there, Anne? I mean, um, we talked about for social good, and you've talked about partnerships. I mean, what what types of of models and opportunities? Uh, you mentioned the entrepreneurship um, uh, model as well. What can we expect in apps? Maybe there's something we can look forward to and uh, and wait for and learn from. That would be great. Yeah, um, I think there is a. Th- th- we really are in the middle of a revolution. There's no question about it. Um, I'm part of a, a, um, a group of um, companies that have just been selected for a grant by the government of Kenya. And, um, you know, we're building a series on, on, um, on justice. It's called Haki. In fact, we've just put it up on the Nokia OV store last night. And um, Haki means justice in, in Kiswahili. And so we're going to build a series that's on different forms of justice. Um, and so for that, we're getting a, a, a small grant from the Kenya government. Now, what the Kenya government has done, which is very, very exciting, is that they've come up with this program where they're actually... Um, supporting companies, organizations, developers that are in, that are able to build apps that are solving problems that the, the government itself is keen to, to, to get involved in. So there are different categories that, that range from government itself. Um, and so we've got, you know, corruption um, uh, watch type of apps that are coming through. In fact, what this one of the women from this uh, Kenya ICT board shared with me was that they received 
close to 500 different applications from, from companies that are, that are located in Kenya that um, have different apps. And all of every single app has to do with solving a problem that's on the ground. And so it really, really is a revolution. And, and, and um, even though there may not be the, the sort of depth and of experience and so on, it's coming and it's coming really, really fast. But more importantly, um, they're designing for the reality on the ground. And so, you know, we're not worrying about smartphones. We're not worrying so much about, you know, we're just worrying about, you know, where are our people? Where are they sitting? Um, and if it's Java phones and we have to go through the hassles of making sure that 500 different handsets can actually um, take on these phones, you know, that's, that's great. Um, there's a lot of uh, activity that's going on in Kenya. Here in South Africa, we've got, you know, just a couple of days ago, there was a Mobile Monday where the whole sort of developer community was came together and they were looking at um, apps that, 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 that are for change. Um, and there's competitions and there's support that's coming through from especially the device companies, uh, you know, Samsungs and Nokia's and all these different companies. But we also have our own big um, companies. Last week I was in Cape Town visiting this instant messaging platform called Mixit. I don't know if you've heard of Mixit, but Mixit is, now has close to 50 million um, users on it. And so we are actually going to be promoting Moraba via Mixit. Um, and um, they have a whole approach, which is really about looking at mobile apps um, for social good and reach. And so they're wanting to partner with organizations like ours so that we can actually create the kind of content that they need to be able to push out there. Um, and I can tell you more and more stories. I mean, there's lots that's going down. There's a hub in, um, you know, we, I, I'm part of a lab here that's called the M-Lab, and the M-Lab is also in Nairobi. There's the ICT, there's a iHub in, in Kenya that I'm sure you've heard about that's buzzing. Um, the, the, the opportunity is growing. And what's interesting, a very close friend of mine the other day who's actually a coach, a leadership coach, says to me, you know, I really think that one of the things I should be exploring is how we could actually do in coaching via an app. Um, and so I think what's interesting is that there are, you know, everyone is really beginning to see this as a real opportunity because there is no other more powerful platform. You, if, you, if you try to reach, I don't know, 10 million people, you can't do that on radio. You can't do that on TV. You can't do that on the internet. It's not happening. But on mobile, it's quick. You know, one of my big goals right now is to find the partners who are willing to make sure that for every app that we get, like for Muraba, that Muraba must reach 10 million young kids. We have to reach 10 million, not, not 10,000. So we need the kind of partnerships that will get us there, you know. And, you know, it's growing. I think it's, a, it's an amazing thing. It's great for once as Africa to be sort of on the cutting edge of, of, a, <laughs> of, a, of a revolution, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a techie. I don't have any techie background myself. I just looked at this platform and thought, my goodness, this is powerful. It's opportunity for change, isn't it? It's, op it's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. Um, and so, yeah, and, and you know, one of my small sort of um, uh, sort of pet pet um, hobbies right now is to challenge some of the big uh, established organizations. Like I've gone back to my own colleagues at the UN and say to them, "We can do it differently," you know. And they're now saying to me, "Okay, let's figure out how we can do that differently." But so. you see, you see the change that happens. You know, just at, it's exactly what you're talking like. Where the where the potential of mobile is, it, it, you're saying in in Nairobi, where where there's all of these people, all these companies, individuals submitting applications that are are using mobile to solve real world problems. It's not so much about photo sharing and filters as it is about having an impact on daily lives, and that's really where mobile hits the rubber. And and uh, when you when you can create a hook that creates value. I mean, everybody talks about that, that similar, same story is about an African farmer who uh, checks his mobile device to see where, the, where, you know, where, where he can get a better price for his product or, or the, yeah. the, the impact that mobile payments have had in a, yeah. in a nation without a, without a uh, you know, for the most part, a sound, sound, sound banking infrastructure. So and micro loans and all of these things that are happening in Africa, it, it, that's the melting pot for yeah. pure innovation in a mobile standpoint that makes a huge impact and and you're witnessing it you're down there on the, you're down there on the ground influencing yeah. uh, it's it's so incredible so incredible
No, we're it's we're having fun. It's um, wonder if I oh go ahead, Peggy. So, so I wonder if I could interject for a moment because I'm I'm sitting here thinking how wonderful it is to hear this right after having so many reports recently that say that we are absolutely spoiled and we have to have it bite size otherwise we're not going to accept it and i was i was kind of distraught after i saw those reports because i thought how are we ever going to be able to do anything complex with a mobile device if we always have to be spoon-fed information just the way we want it so um thinking about what you're doing you know, you're taking complex things you're breaking them down so that we can understand them on a, on a feature phone. Um, understanding this is a great blueprint for, for everybody and, and for all app developers and for all topics. I'm just curious if you have anything, uh, maybe not a blueprint, but something to share. How do you take something so complex and break it down? Because you've done it successfully. And if we can crack this, we can get to the point where we really do have mobile education and change. Yeah. I mean, I think... The reality of having um, the limitations of feature phones is that simplicity is everything. So you've got to focus on a very simple and very targeted message for a particular app. So, you know, I, I come from a very sort of complex thinking background. Um, and so I was always arguing with my, you know, my, my colleagues, Phil and, and Tolisi, with whom I've worked and who are really the, the, the brains behind Moraba. I'd say to them, you know, um, but surely we can we can do this and we can create this world and we can put all these graphics in there and they'll say to me, cool it, you know? We can only confront one very simple issue um, and it has to be specific, it has to be targeted, it has to be built so simply that it is not complicated for the basic user, for a casual gamer, for a person who is not familiar with using apps. And this really is the biggest lesson for Muraba. I mean, Muraba, if you have a chance to, to play it on the video, you'll see that it's a very, very simple game. Um, and it's very, you know, it's played on very simple phones. But the message is also, we didn't try to um, deal with every single issue across the, 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 the sort of gender-based violence. You know, we're now looking at a second series that will take on an, uh, another set of um, issues around gender violence. But um, we decided to just focus it. Let's, let's, let's learn about, you know, let's, you know, what are the sort of concepts that you need to understand, you know, so we were very specific. And I tell you, it was very, very tedious. We spent a lot of time doing research, building these questions. Um, and so, I mean, I think the lessons are that, uh, you know, the goal is not to, um, I suppose, conquer the world in one app. The goal is to be able to um, create a very simple app that is going to be powerful enough to actually um, produce results around one simple problem. There is enough time in our lives to be able to build many simple apps to confront all these different simple problems. You know, we're hoping to move towards a crowdsource model where we can get more and more users to participate in building the apps. Um, and we're just going to keep pushing on that point. It has to be simple. It has to be consumable at the lowest feature phone possible. And if smartphones come along and, you know, we now have, I mean, Kenya has about 200,000 little young, you know, Android phones. Um, you know, in another year or two, I'm sure we'll be there. But for now, this is where we are. And this is what's in the hands and pockets of our young ones. And so that's where we are. I'm completely and utterly inspired by you, Anne. Um, I, I, uh, I, 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 I find this so fascinating. I feel that we could probably spend uh, a better part of a day uh, peppering you with questions. Um, <laughs> I, I, how do people find out more about what you are doing? Where should we be pointing them? Well, this, I suppose the catch-all is our website. So that's um, uh, www.afros.com. Afros with an E. And it's not the Afros with the big Afro. It's A-F-R-O-E-S. Afro stands for African Heroes and heroines. Um, each of our games is available on the diff on, on feature phones, um, Java enabled feature phones. And um, the, 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 the links are on our website, but we, if you want to um, access Moraba in particular, you can also go to playunite.org, which is part of the end um, violence against women across Africa unite campaign. Playunite.org on your feature phone. Um, 
uh, Java enabled feature phone and you know have a good time we, we will be porting it to um, other other phones soon but for now that's where we are do you do you foresee a point in time where, where you um, go beyond the barriers of Africa and, and start to bring this out uh, you know eventually uh, you know to other nations with feature phones that you move into iPhone or Android devices where the, the, the similar problems are being faced or are you really focusing uh, local uh, local in I mean, local in a nation the size of Africa is, but... Um, well, we, you know, we I've, I have two interesting relationships that I'm, I'm, I'm sort of uh, um, building right now. The one is with um, a company in Italy that uh, we met at the Score World Forum on Social Entrepreneurship. And so we're exploring how to get Moraba beyond um, the African borders because they too are working on some apps on, on gender violence and we want to explore how we can bring their app here and take that app, take Moraba out there. Um, and they're very keen, they're very interested because they're saying actually the issues that you're talking about are not that different. I think the difference is that maybe you have more resources to deal with them, but you know here it's, it's, a, it's a huge crisis because of, of, of resource constraints. Um, and then there's a there's a company in New York that's built a very interesting game that really deals with sort of women and women leadership and so on. And so we're exploring how to um, bring that game to to the African continent um, or tailor it for Africa, but um, it would be available globally. So we we're not in the in the in the in the medium term we're going to start thinking more globally about um, the apps, but with the priority really in Africa. So. It will be first built for Africa, and um, you know, and then I suppose we can expand that out um, as a strategy to be able to reach the rest of the world. But Africa is our priority. Africa is rising, and we've got to invest here. Um, and there's great opportunity. There's still 300 million to reach. Imagine that. Wow, Peggy, I'm inspired. I don't know about you. Um, Absolutely. I I I I don't know uh, what I've been doing in mobile um, up until this conversation, but. <laughs> but and what you've done is has changed my perspective um, uh, for, for the for the much better. Uh, you know, it, it it just it shows that this industry that 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 we all love so much can do so much good in the right mm -hmm. hands with the right reasons for doing this. And and um, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on and sharing what you guys are doing. It it uh, is truly astounding. And um, and all you guys who are out there listening or watching, you, you have to check out. Uh, afros a f r o e s dot com um and and start thinking socially you, you have to start thinking socially for the betterment of the planet for the betterment of your conscience for the betterment of everything um start thinking about this the social impact that mobile can have uh just beyond your borders and let's not focus on filters and fidgets and let's really focus on what mobile can do for f for the, the planet and it's a perfect example and I can't thank you enough. I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you, Rob. We, we've thank been you. speaking with, with Anne Shongwei, uh, who's the founder and CEO of Afros. Uh, she's down in Pretoria, South Africa. Um, please go and check it out. And, uh, and thank you guys all for watching. Peggy, thanks. This has been great. And thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Peggy. That is Anne Shongwei. I've just pulled up Afros, A-F-R-O-E-S dot com. What a story. What a story, Peggy. Um, you know, when, when you hear these things, I said this in the interview, like, what I've been doing hasn't been the right thing. I, you know, I focus on mobile, but you, sometimes you forget what the important things are. And boy, this is one of those important things, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's about mobile, but it's also um, about understanding and harnessing the power of what my friend, colleague, Tommy Ahonen calls you know, the seventh mass media. That's exactly what it is. And it's, it's, a, it's a media, it's a two-way conversation you can have on mobile, which is awesome. But more importantly, it's a way of, as she said, you're know, reaching people at scale, impacting lives at scale. Um, so I'm hoping this is just the beginning of a, of a great you know, slew of, of apps and services we hear from Anne and people like her because, um, you know, Education, healthcare, she's proven it can all be impacted by mobile. Well, it, you know, it had such an impact on me that I went away that weekend, this past weekend, and wrote this article up there, Why Mobile <coughs> Can Be the World's Greatest great. Social Equalizer. And I believe mm -hmm. this in all my heart is that, um, you know, we're not doing enough with this. We're not drawing enough attention to this. And sometimes it isn't just about the revenue you can generate. 
or can't generate. It's not about the number of filters you have or the IPO. It's about how many humans you can impact and have, an, have changed their behaviors and raise economies. And I think that that's, that's what I got out of this. And I really appreciate Anne for coming on and, and reigniting that passion in mobile that seemed to get lost in Instagrams and IPOs and Facebooks and mm. all that garbage that just kind of clouds the mind around what the real potential is for this industry. And every once in a while, you need a good mm -hmm. shakeup, and Anne, Anne did that. So I propose that we raise these things, the goblets. Absolutely. The goblets of rock. Absolutely. We will, we will toast those folks like Anne that are out there struggling yeah. to do the world good, not just themselves, to go out and find and, mm -hmm. and change and adjust sh social norms through the use of this technology. And I know that Mobile Web West Africa is going to be doing these things and they're going to be featuring some of these companies that are attacking root issues. Again, not how many photos or how many filters you can share, or how many friends you have. This is actually impacting human lives. So I'm going to raise a big goblet. We should just say that we should mm. retire the goblet after this because what they've done <laughs> is pretty astounding. So to Anne and all those folks out there changing the world through mobile, we salute you. I wish this was full of some, some kind of elixir that I could drink, get rid of this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know how we topped this interview. Um, It'll happen. I mean, we won't top it, Rob, but, you know, I mean, I've been out there looking around, scouring, you know, I've, I've been very happy to be sort of the scout uh, for, for Impulse. And uh, I found some other people, some other speakers from the event where Anne spoke, but just general uh, around uh, around Africa and, and then and then beyond. So we're just going to keep this going. Uh, that's what I love about your new strap line. I mean, it's the global look at at uh, app developers and what, what the app economy is all about. So uh, we won't top her, but we will have some, some definite uh, uh, runners up. Sounds good to me, Peggy. <laughs> And I will promise that for... I've got, I've got some surprises Whoa. for you. Let me know. I can't wait. Yes? I can't wait. My voice will be back for episode number 14. And I hope you guys will be back for episode number 14 of Impulse. Until then, if you have any feedback, comments, suggestions, reach out. We are inherently findable. You can find us very easily. Mobilegroove.com, untether.tv. Reach out. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you don't like. If you have an idea for a show, if you're a developer, you want us to cover something, please... Bring it this way. If you have an idea, somebody you want to raise the goblet to, we'd love to hear from you as well. So mm -hmm. we will be back for episode number 14. Absolutely. My voice will be back for episode number 14. Hopefully you will be back for episode number 14. And I just have to say one more thing, which is exactly what got me into trouble. Go, sentence, go. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. We'll see you next week on Impulse. Thanks, Thank everybody. you, Rob. <laughs>